Hey everyone, how's it going? I just finished making this tic-tac-toe game in Vue.js. It works as you'd expect. It can determine who wins, and then you can play another game. It can also determine if it's a cat's game. So if you want to see how we make this, feel free to stick around. It's not too much code, just like 83 lines, and most of that's styling in HTML. <clears throat> All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is navigate to the directory that we want this to be created. We're going to do that inside of the terminal. I just did it. So now what I'm going to do is say view, create, and I'm going to call this tic-tac-toe-tutorial. You can call it whatever you want. In a minute, it's going to give me the option to pick what kind of view that I want to use. Once this pops up, I'm going to press the down arrow and then click enter because we want to use view three. Now this is going to take a little bit, so I'm just going to skip it. But when it's all done, come back and we can continue with the video. Inside of here, first thing I want to do is open my terminal by holding control and pressing tilde. And I'm going to say npm run serve to get the project up and running. I'm also going to go into my SRC and clear out some of the boilerplate. I don't want these components or these assets. Empty template. Get rid of the component. And empty the style. Now let's create a div here and let's give this the ID equal to board. I'm going to give this a background color of gray just so that we can see it and a height and width of let's say 400 pixels. We can also center it by saying margin zero auto. And now you can see we have this nice little game board that we're going to be using for our tic-tac-toe. I'm going to get rid of the background color change. I just wanted to show you that it exists. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my squares. I'm going to make a div and I'm going to say class equals square. And then I'm going to say v4, and I'm going to set that equal to n in 9, because that's how many squares we're going to want. And then I'm going to say vbind key equals n. The inside of this square is going to equal square. We don't have square set yet. But we will have it soon. Also, we're going to need an on click. So let's say at click and let's set that equal to clicked square and pass this. Now, inside of the script, let's start by making our setup method because we're using the composition API. Let's say let square equal ref that'll be an array. We can also let current turn equal x. Now let's make a loop. Let's say for let i equal zero. I is less than or equal to nine i plus plus. And what we can do inside of this for loop is just say square value 
push and let's push null. Forgot to put a semicolon there. All right, now let's import our ref and let's return some values. So first thing I'll do is return. We're going to want to return square. And we have to also import ref from view. Let's also define our function clicked square. And what we can do right now is just say console log current turn. And let's say current turn equals x. If that's true, then what we're going to do is set current turn equal to O. And if it's not true, then we will set it equal to X. Let's return this method. We have a weird thing that we're seeing here. That's OK. So let's also do this. Let's make sure that we're getting the square N. That's what we want to output, which right now is nothing, right? Because it's null. I'm also going to style our squares here. So I'm going to say display flex for the board, flex direction row, flex wrap, wrap. Then for square, let's give them all a width of 30%. Give it a background color of gray and a border, one pixel solid black. All right, so that's our tic tac toe square. Let's see if our click functionality is working. Nice click functionality is working perfectly. That's exactly what we want to see. So now, so now let's work on our click square function. Let's say if square value. So instead of passing this, let's just pass n actually. And let's grab it here. And let's say if square value n. Does not equal null return. And if we're not returning, we can say square value n equals current turn. And that's the basics of tic tac toe here. We've got our board being able to write. That was super quick. The next thing that we're going to have to do is figure out if people are winning, right? So let's make two new functions here. Make a function is winner and a function is cat. We can call them right here. Also make a new ref. Let's say let game over equal ref true that's a value that we're going to want to return here and then to display the board let's say vf game over all right so the first thing that we can do is figure out if there's a winner now this is going to be done with a series of lines so inside of this function the first thing i want to do is declare the lines i'm just going to copy and paste these but essentially what this is, is these are all the different ways that you could win, right? Now this one is not using a zero index because the way this code is working, it's skipping the zero index. Something I could do to really show this is say square value zero equals nothing.
Now, since I'm saying it equals nothing, I shouldn't be able to click that zero square, right? One of these squares should be not clickable because we're checking and only clicking the null ones. That's because the first square is actually one, which may seem a little weird, but that's just the way that this is set up. So just try to remember that throughout the rest of this program because it'll come in handy. So I'm gonna get rid of this console log and I'm gonna determine if there's a winner. I can say for let i equal zero, i is less than lines length i plus plus. Then inside of here, I can say const. Let's get this a, b, and c, which are going to be a, b, and c for all of these. And I'm going to set that equal to lines. I. And now I'm going to test it. So if square value a and square value a equals square value b and square value a equals square value c, then it's game over. So what we're going to do is say game over value equals false. Actually, you know what? Let's make this a little easier. Since I'm using the word game over, let's make it equal true. And let's start it off as false and say not game over there. Game over is not defined. It needs a capital O. All right, let's see if this works so far. All right, awesome. That's a fully functioning game. We've just got to define the cats and style it up a little bit. So for the cats, I'm actually going to change this again. I don't really know how I feel about saying null. I think I'm going to instead use the string empty. I feel like that looks a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to change that here too. So is cats. What I want to do is say let is cats equal true. And then I want to say square value for each. And we want to get the S. And then we want to loop through all of these squares. So what we want to say in here is if S equals empty, right? Because if any of them are still empty, then it's not a cat's game. Is cats is going to be false. And then if is cats equals true, what we want to do is say game over value equals true. One other thing that we should do too is make sure that square value a does not equal empty since we changed that from null. So let's say that and let's see if we can get a cat's game here. Awesome. The cat's game functionality worked. So we're in good shape. We've got a full-on tic-tac-toe game. All we have to do is add a little bit of styling. And I'm going to also add a play button. So I'm going to actually start this now as true. So we'll see nothing's displayed. And then what I'm going to do is add a little play button. So here I'm going to say div vf game over. Inside of here, what I want to say is button click equals a function. We're going to call this start game. And then let's say play a new game. 
Let's define the function and return it in the setup. Start game, we can just say game over value equals false. And there you go. Now we have a fully functioning tic-tac-toe game. And one thing left that we have to do is just be sure to set the values back. So let's make sure that every time that we call this, before we set it equal to false, we say square value splice. And we want to take the zero index and we want to get rid of everything all the way over to the end. So from zero to the square value length. And then we want to run the same for loop that we ran before, where we just loop through and push the initial values. Also, we should make sure that we set the zero index to nothing again, just so that the function runs as we expect. Now, if we play a new game and we win, we should see a clear board and be able to win again. Perfect, that's working exactly how we want. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe or leave a like if you wanna see more content just like it. I hope you have a great day. Take it easy.